Hey English 1102 friends, this is a video taking you through a couple of the family and community poems. Uh, this, we're going to go through Letter to My Future Child by Megan Amram. Uh, if you don't know Megan Amram, she is mostly a TV writer now. She writes for, um, she's written for the show The Office and The Good Place. Um, we're going to go through this poem, Letter to My Future Child of Hers. And then also Elegy for My Father Who Is Not Dead by Andrew Hudgens. This poem's a little bit older. Um, Andrew, and Andrew Hudgens is still alive, American writer. Um, but this, I put these two poems together because Elegy for My Father Who Is Not Dead is sort of looking backwards. And the narrator, the speaker in the poem is thinking about his dad and his dad's perspective. And then Letter to My Future Child, she's sort of thinking forward to this child who you find out in the poem she doesn't plan on having. There is no future child, and the poem is about our decision to not have a child. So we'll, we'll start with Letter to My Future Child. Since it's a little bit longer, we'll get through it. The way you don't exist is remarkable. When I have been hot-wired, cobbled from spongy tubes specifically to birth. So she's talking about basic biological fact here. You know, women have the biological equipment to have a child and so she's saying you know I, I've got all the equipment I seem to be made to have a child but I've decided I'm not going to have one at least to bud would be preferable shedding a child like petals drooping from a center and, it, and she's playing with the image of like how um, petals bloom out of the center of the flower and then bud out um, how like a child would would come that will like bud and bloom out of you I apologize profusely to you, but I am content in my selfishness and my love of this girl I've created. So she's saying, like, I'm, I, I've made myself, and that's enough people I don't want to make anymore. Today I watched the bees graze, the perfect mix of threat and song and binge, and I felt I too could bob and maneuver. I guess they reminded me of you. If you know what bees are doing when they graze, when they go from flower to flower, they're pollinating the flowers. So there, there's this reproduction happening. And so she sees the bees you know, helping the flowers reproduce and she thinks about um, reproduction. I guess they reminded me of you, your, your toddling bumble, your absent suckle, your mere addition to the swarm. You would be a plump grub and honeysuckle were you to be anything. So she's saying, you know, you're getting this you get all this grub and honeysuckle and stuff like that, like blooming, and a grub is a little baby um, insect. Were you to be anything, but you will not be. You get that? She's playing with the word be and be here. Um, and she says, you're not, but you're not going to exist. You're not going to be. You're not going to be. This is something I've decided. There's only so much life to go around. I'll take two rations. So she said, I'll take two rations, mine and yours, the child I'm not going to have. The pedal and the pistol. If you know the pedal and the pistol, that's um, flower imagery. The pedal is the bloom. The pistol is the stem. So she's saying, I'm keeping it all to myself. And hey, the calyx. The ability to share is mythic, like you. And who needs another creature, another sea monster? You know, a, a baby inside you and that inside that amniotic fluid, a sea monster. I already have the swooping vertebrae of my back. I have my bones diving above and below my skin filled with just the right amount of people. One. She's saying there's already, you know, enough people in my body. Just one. I don't need another person living in here. How could I bring a child into this world when I want it all to myself? Life is that right and full of love, flowers, et al. I'm sorry for me. Sure. You know, she says, I'm, I'm sorry. I won't get to meet you. I won't. There won't be a future child, and I'm sorry. But most of all, little B, I'm sorry for you because you're not going to exist. I've, I've decided. It, it, myself is enough for me the self I've created I don't, I don't need a child to feel complete so this is a poem about being a woman um, and women often feel this social and cultural pressure to reproduce to have a baby to, to complete themselves by having a baby and this poem is pushing back against that and saying no um, I don't have to do that to feel complete or to feel whole I'm, I'm good I'm good with just one person in my body me um, Elegy to my father has this very different tone where he's thinking that the dad is ready to let go and he's thinking about his dad and he's not ready to let his dad go. You know, letter to my future child, she's like, you're not going to exist. And this poem is very clear, this much sadder poem about not wanting to let go. If you don't know what an elegy is, elegy, um, 
the title of this poem is sort of a joke because um, Elegy is a poem that is written to celebrate the life of someone who has died and to mourn their passing and, and often you get like think about mortality. So this poem is an elegy in the sense that it's about mortality, but it's about somebody who is not dead yet, which is sort of a twist on the idea of the elegy, because usually you don't get an elegy until after somebody's died. One day, I'll flip the telephone and be told my father's dead. So he's like, I, I know it's kind of coming sooner or later. I'm going to have to have this day. He's ready. In the sureness of his faith, he talks about the world beyond this world as though his reservations have been made. I think he wants to go a little bit, a new desire to travel building up, an itch to see fresh worlds or older ones. So the dad is like, I've had a good life. I think there's another life after this life, and whatever's coming, I'm ready to go. The, the dad's not worried or stressed or sad. He's like, I'm ready for whatever's coming next. He thinks that when I follow him, he'll wrap me in his arms and laugh the way he did when I arrived on Earth. So just like when they came to this world, the dad thinks that when they arrive in the next world, the dad will get there first, and then he will welcome the son, just like he did in this life. I do not think he's right. He's ready. I am not. I can't just say goodbye as cheerfully as if he were embarking on a trip to make my later trip go well. So here's the gap. This, the dad is like, there's something, there's another life after this life, and I'm ready for it. You know, I've had all I wanted, and, and I'll just be there waiting to welcome you. The son is like, I'm not so sure that's what's coming next. I see myself on deck convinced his ship's gone down. So the son is like, you're, you're gone, you're just gone. While he's convinced, I'll see him standing on the dock and waving, shouting, well, welcome back. So it's, this poem is really about how the son is afraid that when his dad is gone, he's gone for good. The dad is, has this sort of faith, and he's like, no, this is just one more journey, um, and I'll welcome you into the next life just like I welcomed you into this one. The, the son is not so sure about that, which makes him much sadder you know, to think about the dad being gone and getting that phone call from the beginning of the poem lift the telephone and be told my father's dead, you know, that's much sadder for the son who doesn't believe um, that there's anything coming next. I hope that helps you understand these two poems and even see a little bit of connection between them, although one is about a parent, one is about a child, a child that's not going to happen. Anyway, I hope that helps you understand these two poems. Thanks.